Yeah, that kind of stuff, Tara. Yeah. Did you find that was easy to actually contact an academic? And how? Yeah. what type of advice would you give on that? Because what type of questions did you ask them? Yeah, that's the other thing, is that I, I don't know why, I thought I was going to have to like physically go see the person or have a phone interview or something, and I was really stressed out about it. But you can just send an email, obviously using formal language like, dear, you know, so-and-so, and yours sincerely, so-and-so. And, um, but just make sure you don't just send a question like, can you tell me about anxiety? Like, don't, don't make it too broad because then they don't know what to do with that. So I sent a couple of like key questions, like maybe about three to five to each person I'd send. I'd send a couple of key questions that I wanted answered, um, like how does um, anxiety impact concentration within the school or something like that, but just make sure you direct um, the academic or the expert in the direction that you kind of need to go so that um, they, otherwise they'll just get overwhelmed and won't be able to answer the broad question. Yeah. Mm. Did you have any experience with that as well, Laura? <laughs> um, well, firstly, finding Google Scholar was like my life, and I still use it today. Um, if I hadn't done research project in year 12, <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten Google Scholar, and it, I just wouldn't have worked it out, and I would have struggled so much at uni. So I think that's what the purpose of research project is. I think the uni people said to the high school people, these people, the kids need to know um, how to use Google Scholar and how to get scholar, scholarly articles. I can't say that word. Um, um, and when it came, comes to getting primary resources, I've already told you how I didn't hear anything back. But there are ways around that too. Sometimes for each topic, you might not actually need a primary resource. Um, I wouldn't know. You need it, but you don't need it from um, an academic or something. You can get it in other ways. So my primary resources were mostly, um, I did actually go to a zoo and I talked to zookeepers and stuff. Um, but like just surveys too. It's very popular in year 12 to run a survey monkey survey to your friends. I enticed my people to fill it out with candy canes so I could actually get responses rather than like only 11 out of the 30 I sent or something. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my... Um. So if you've mentioned things like Google Scholar and talking with, ac talking with academics, and that, did any of you actually go to any of the universities and use any of their actual resources physically go there? No, I didn't know it existed. I had no idea, and if I did know, I probably would have had a much better time. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you can actually sign up to be become basically a member of the Flinders Library. So you get given your own card with your own, you know, good-looking photo on there, and like you can go in and hire, hire, like borrow the books. But then you can also, if you go on campus, you can actually go onto a computer and access um, all our databases, and it's really easy to use. You can type in your key area. And all the results that come up, like it's not like you just do a Google search and you get some Wikipedia page or something. You're going to get good quality stuff that you know your teachers will love. That you've actually really got good quality um, things like that, and then you can just save the PDFs to USB and then use it when you need. Probably. Um, just one point about databases, which I only actually learnt last week or something in a lecture. Um, I was so dead scared of databases in school, like I hated using them, the librarians always told me to use them and I never did. I stuck to my Google, stuck to what I knew. Um, and now that I'm at university, obviously I'm doing a lot of research topics myself and have to conduct research via databases because it's what's required. And uh, the lecturer told me the other day that a lot of uh, the good information, so um, they talk about peer-reviewed sources, which is basically where a um, academic resource is accredited by other individuals as being like a decent source. And uh, so a lot of peer-reviewed articles appear on things like Google Scholar and databases, but you can't actually, because they're sort of accredited and ad exist specifically with these databases, you can't find them via a Google search. So really what that means is what you're going to get on Google is never going to be the top, the top quality stuff. So to actually access the top range information to sort of get the best that you can for your research project. You're going to need to take a step out of your comfort zone a little bit, sign up to the Flinders Library, ask an expert, or find some more specific sources through your schools or through Google Scholar. So I think that's really important to know. So I think some advice, I guess, if you're taking away something from each of that is to research quite widely. So 
use things like scholarly articles, access, start talking to people, use surveys and use a range of those different things. So you can bring different sources from other areas and you get different points of views as well. Um, I'm conscious about time, so I know what we're looking at at the moment, but um, with all of that in mind and now looking, at it, looking back at your project and where you're at at the moment, because each of you are in a different course and each income to different schools, while I might seem quite a different project at the time, how did you find that's actually helped you now? now that you're at uni or in other subjects at school or anything like that? Um, so for me, I spent all of year 12 not knowing what degree I wanted to do at university. I knew that from my experience that I wanted to help kids achieve, uh, uh, children who don't receive an education like we all have, I wanted to help them receive that education. But I didn't know whether I wanted to do that via law or doing an education degree and being a teacher. And I think through doing <clears throat> research projects and learning about policy, but then also learning about the importance of teachers and student-teacher relationships, that really helped me confirm the fact that I wanted to be a teacher in my heart, despite what ATAR was or whatever. Um, yeah, so doing the research project actually helped me confirm where I want to go with my life. So if you're really interested in, in something specifically, if it's about a degree or a career path, I really encourage you to do that. Um, my main thing was that I think research project really encourages self-directed learning, so that which is obviously a big thing at university. So it's kind of like a good transition step. Um, so it's getting you used to um, doing something that's in your area of passion, and then guiding that research yourself. So which is often what university um, really is, and then it also just really helps. Um, like Laura was saying about if some people don't reply, it can be a challenge, but it's. Um, in research project you really learn to identify challenges but then you still can document that and then talk about how you overcame that so that's a really good point to you can like reflect on your own learning which is really a great tool to then be able to have when you go to university. So the research project taught me time management. <laughs> the research project is a massive project it goes for a long time and if you're not organized and if you don't structure it well you won't do very well. I have found through my various friends and stuff. Um, so, and then when you go to uni, it's a lot more flexible. There's no teachers to be like, oh, get this draft done, do this. There's nothing like that. And the research project taught me to be organised and how to plan a research essay. And that's exactly what we do at uni all the time. Like for each class, we do a research essay each semester. So it kind of becomes the norm. And you know, the research project might seem so massive and stuff, but honestly, I'm telling you soon, it'll be just the normal. <laughs> and before we open up to any questions anyone might have, did you want to leave with maybe one, each of you I guess, from your own experience, what would probably be the one thing that you wish you did get told at the time when you were doing it? Um, I would say the main thing would be that, like you probably hear it all the time, but quality is a lot more important than quantity. So you know how you, out of, you may do heaps of research, but you pick your best 10 pages to send and get marked by say. So Basically, they're not going to see that you've done, say, 80 pages or something like that. They're going to look at the quality of it. So I think at the start, I was going crazy just wanting to get heaps, heaps and heaps of sources, but they were really badly like, annotated and reflected on. So I think even if like, you've got not many sources, it's just about how you do with that information, how you reflect on it, which is really important. It's going to get you the good grade that you'd like. Um. Gosh, um, for me, I think it was to not slack off. Um, at the start of the research project, especially because I did it in year 12, uh, myself and a lot of my friends, we all saw the research project lesson, like the designated time, three times a week, or whatever, as just like study periods. It was like, great, research project, I'll get my English assignment done. And then you get you know, a term through and you're like, oh my God, like I've got to complete X, Y, and Z you know, in three weeks. So it's about... Yeah, self-directed learning, being focused, having a timeline and really sticking to that because otherwise, I'm telling you guys, regardless of whether you're in year 10, 11 or 12, school goes really, really quickly and your terms just fly by, so you need to be on the game. So I really wish that I was told, well, I mean, I was told, but I really wish I listened to my research project teacher and engaged with her a lot more. I only engaged with her once my questions started falling to rubbish and no one was responding to me and I was just having such a bad time. If I had engaged with her more at the beginning, I would have probably had a better quality question to follow through with the rest of the project and it would have been easier on my life. Mm. 
while we've got these three up here, um, does anyone in the group actually want to ask any questions while they're here? Um, that could be about them getting started, it can be about stuff they've done, it could be about their particular projects or anything at all, or any of us. There's a microphone that's around that can help with that. And if not, that's okay. Um, if you've not been had a chance to come and actually have a chat with us today, um, make sure you do come by. Grab um, the handout tips that we've got. That's going to be useful when you're getting started. It's got some different pages you can have a look at. It's got things like what you've heard Tara, what you've heard Emily, what you've heard Laura mention about using the library. So be able to sign up for that for free as you're 11 or 12 student. Use extra resources that you don't have at school. So you can access the big four-story library that they've got there. You can come on campus, use their databases. You can look on the expert page and look if there's particular people in the fields you might be interested in and actually access the type of information and get all of this now to make it easier for when you're going forward through that. So while we're, while we're here, I want to say thank you for coming in again and for listening and for thank you, Emily, Lara, Emily Tara and Laura.